Mario. What's up guys? I'm Sean Rader and welcome to my Super Mario 64 Beginner Speedrun Guide. I'll be going over the basic setup of the game and typical resources that this game's runners use. I'll be covering quite a bit in this guide, so please use the timestamps in the description if you want to skip to a specific part. Any resources I reference will also be down there. First is getting yourself set up to play SM64. I highly recommend joining the Super Mario 64 Speedruns Discord and getting yourself acquainted with their resources tab. Among the links is a PC emulator setup guide, which is what I recommend any beginners to start with. Unfortunately, there is some controversy in the community over which platform to play on, with emulator being sometimes taken less seriously. N64 is typically the standard for high level speedrunning, regardless, emulator is by far the easiest to set up and has all the practice tools you need without the hardware costs of the N64 and Wii. Wii and Wii U are less popular than the other two. Wii is a good option if you'd rather play on an official release, and is more accessible, but Wii U Virtual Console has a lot of input lag and is pretty much unusable. On emulator, you can use all sorts of controllers. As long as they have an analog stick, they're typically fine to run on. If you plan to make the switch to console at some point, it may be worth investing in an N64 controller and a RefNet USB to N64 adapter. The N64 controller is also accepted by many as the best controller for this game, though many hate its shape. The Hori Mini Pad is a third-party N64 controller that also works on original console and is shaped more like a GameCube controller. A few top runners prefer this controller, but it's very expensive as not many of them were made. A GameCube controller can be used with a Mayflash or Nintendo official USB to GC adapter on emulator, and a Rafnet N64 to GC adapter on original console. This controller isn't perfect, as it has a stick for the camera instead of buttons, and the analog triggers make it harder to pinpoint when you're actually hitting the crouch button. However, this is the controller that I use, and it works fine once you get used to some of its quirks. The last I'll talk about are Xbox and PlayStation controllers. There are many skilled emulator runners that use these controllers, as they are quite durable and high quality. The major downside is that there's no real way to use these on original console, unlike the past three that I mentioned. So to make the switch, you'd have to change controllers. I used to use an Xbox 360 pad, and getting used to GameCube took me weeks. Next, you'll have to determine what speedrun category you want to run. 16 star and 70 star are by far the most popular, as the others require good fundamentals and or game knowledge going in. 16 star is very fast to learn, has relatively easy stars, and can provide a trial period to see if you want to learn more time intensive categories. 70 star on the other hand, drills much better fundamentals, has good variety of movement technique, and explores nearly all levels in the game. Both are good ways to start, it really depends on how long you're willing to spend practicing. 70 star is very time intensive, and I would recommend putting at least 30 hours of practice in before starting runs in earnest. If this sounds like too much for you, 16 star might be a better way to start. There are three main versions of Super Mario 64. NTSCU, NTSCJ, and PAL. These are the North American, Japanese, and European versions respectively. PAL is an awful version, as the game actually runs at a lower frame rate than the others. NTSCU is the fastest version for 70 star, while NTSCJ is faster for all other categories due to numerous differences like tech speed, start placement, and a minor glitch. These differences are quite minimal, so if you're playing on console, I wouldn't worry about getting different versions unless your time gets very optimized. You can download both versions for emulator, however, so it's worth doing to get the best time possible. I should also mention that N64 cartridges are region locked, so you can only play a region's cartridge on its respective region's console. This can be bypassed with some hardware knowledge, and I'll leave a link in the description for anyone interested. As you can probably tell, practice is very important to drill muscle memory. The best way to practice on emulator is to use a modded version of SM64 called the Usamune Practice ROM. Details on how to set it up are in the Google Doc in the description. All the features of this ROM are also listed in the Google Doc, but I'll demonstrate a few of my most used ones. Pressing down on the D-pad opens the menu. Pressing R will switch between the settings and level select. Under reset, you can set L to level reset, which will let you restart from the beginning of a level at any time with L. In case you want to practice something that isn't at the start of the level, you can save a state by pausing the game and unpausing again. Make sure your load state button is set to D up under reset. Then you can press up on the D-pad to load your state. You can also give yourself all 120 stars under data to be able to select specific stars to practice. Under MISC, you can turn off the music as well. 
To time their runs, pretty much all speedrunners use a program called LiveSplit. It's an extremely well-made software that has tons of customization options and features. The method of timing most use is through subsections of the run called splits. Whenever you finish a stage, you press a key on the keyboard to split, and LiveSplit will save the amount of time it took you to complete that stage. This means that you can more accurately compare to your past runs and see how you're doing while running. When you complete a split, colored numbers will appear. Red means you're trailing behind your old PB, or personal best, while green means you're currently ahead. If you play really well on a stage, you may get your fastest time you've ever gotten in a split throughout all your runs. This would make the number gold, and overwrites the red or green color. If you get to the end of your run and get a better time than the current one Live Split has saved, it will save this time over the old one, and this will become your new PB. <sighs> Holy... Yes! Yes! I should note that a timer is not required for submission at all. This is only for your own benefit. The finer details of live split can be tricky to get the hang of, so I recommend watching Small Ant 1's video if you're interested. When you get a time you're proud of, it's a good idea to submit this to speedrun.com and mark your place in the leaderboard. This can only be done with video proof, so I recommend using OBS to capture your footage while doing runs. First, you need to make a scene. Next, add a window capture for your emulator. I recommend adding another window capture for live split, though it's not necessary. Then you can just hit record. It'll automatically save the file, then you just need to upload it to any video hosting site. Thanks for watching guys. If you're unclear on anything in this video, or you need help with SM64 in general, I'm more than happy to help in my Discord server or Twitch chat. I stream 3 to 4 days a week with a 10 to 12 hour stream every Saturday and read every message posted on my Discord. If you guys enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate a like, comment, or subscription. My schedule is quite busy right now, so if I knew you guys wanted more, I'd work even harder to get more parts done. Thanks again.